almost 20 million motor vehicles are owned by California residents. And each car, truck, motorcycle, or trailer must have license plates issued by the State Department of Motor Vehicles. Most Californians are probably aware that the license plates which they purchase from the DMV are manufactured at Folsom Prison. What most Californians probably don't realize is that the license plate factory at Folsom, although one of the oldest and undoubtedly the best known prison industry, is just one operation in a whole network of agricultural and industrial enterprises. What are the others? Come on along and we'll show you. Not only license plates of all kinds, but dozens of other things that are also made in prison. Recent legislation has changed the name of prison-based manufacturing and farming enterprises. Historically known as California Correctional Industries, the operation is now designated as the Prison Industry Authority. Also, an advisory board known as the Correctional Industries Commission has been replaced by a board with generally the same powers and responsibilities as the board of directors of any private corporation. This prison industry board is chaired by the director of the California Department of Corrections. Of the remaining 10 members, two are the directors of general services and the Department of Economic and Business Development. Four are appointed by the governor, two by the Senate Rules Committee, and two by the Speaker of the Assembly. Headquarters for the Prison Industry Authority is this office complex at 16th and I Streets near the State Capitol in Sacramento. Ray Specht, Deputy Director of the Department of Corrections, serves as General Manager and Chief Administrative Officer of the Prison Industry Authority. Specht is currently responsible for overseeing about 30 industrial and agricultural operations employing 2,700 inmate workers and approximately 300 civil service supervisors and managers. These programs are located at 10 state prisons and will soon expand to include prison industry enterprises at work sites in Los Angeles and other major cities. We ask Ray Speck to explain the primary functions of the prison industries program. One is uh, to provide meaningful work programs for inmates uh, at no cost to the state, thus reducing idleness, you know. Uh, we also are in the business of training inmates, providing them some skills, uh, both in work skills and in work habits, uh, so that hopefully they can go out on parole or on discharge and get a job and not come back. And then lastly, we uh, are in the business of reducing the cost of state operations uh, by selling products to the state. How realistic is the industry's program in respect to training inmates for employment in the free world? Well, it's realistic in terms of uh, instilling in the inmate the ability to show up for work and put in a full work day. Uh, most of our inmates have never had this experience. They, they don't know how to work. Uh, this is what we primarily emphasize is, you know, how to, not work skills as such because uh, we don't have the most modern equipment. Uh, we also try to be labor intensive to employ the most inmates possible so we're not maybe as streamlined or mechanized as, as private industry. We've been informed though uh, most recently by a representative of the California Chamber of Commerce that 
what they are interested in most in new employees is the ability to work. They don't care about the skill. As long as an employee is uh, able to come to work, put in an eight-hour day, put in a full eight-hour day, uh, you know, and come back tomorrow to do the same, that's what they're mostly interested in. They say they don't get that uh, on the street. If they could get that from our parolees, they'd just be delighted. My personal feeling is that, that yes, it does have a positive impact on inmates. Uh, we, we do, we know as a matter of fact that we do place inmates because we receive calls. Our factory supervisors and superintendents receive calls and letters from inmates who are out on the streets actually working and uh, they call telling of their progress and thanking, for, thanking the people for the, the help they receive. People from the community are also useful in helping prison industries to meet their goals. We quite frequently receive requests from private industry uh, uh, to help us in placing inmates out there. Uh, we have trade advisory committees in many of our factories where private industry and labor comes in and works with us, not only in uh, helping us improve our operations uh, technically, uh, professionally, but also in placing inmates once they're paroled. Speck likes to stress that the prison industry program is not supported in any way by the taxpayer. Because we are entirely self-financing. Uh, we don't take any tax dollars. Uh, no tax uh, money comes to us. Uh, all of our salaries, all of our inmate pay, all of our equipment, all of our supplies are purchased through the profits we make through the sale of our own merchandise. What about sales volume? Does the financial balance sheet show the prison industry goods and services making a reasonable profit? Uh, last year for, uh, was our best year in the history of correction industries. We had sales of over $30 million, uh, and our profits were about $2 million. Let's take a look at some of the prison industry products. A good place to start is with this man. He is, in fact, a State Department of Corrections inmate who works in the prison industries program. He isn't doing anything very unusual, just putting on his clothes as he does every morning. What is unusual is that everything he will be wearing is made in prison. Underwear? Certainly, at several state prisons. T-shirt? Completely knitted and sewn at California Men's Colony. Socks? Right a knitting mill product of the men's colony at San Luis Obispo. Blue jeans? Well, not Levi Strauss, but California Correctional Institution at Tehachapi. Shoes or boots? Both are completely fabricated from soles to laces at California Men's Colony. And the blue chambray shirt? Made from pattern right down to the last buttonhole at the California Rehabilitation Center in Norco. Prison factories manufacture many other clothing items, too. For instance, traditional-style work gloves and special flame-resistant gloves for firefighters, windbreaker jackets, and high-visibility vests and shirts for highway workers. Several styles of jumpsuits, orange for firefighting crews, green or white for jail or prison inmates. Even regular civilian clothing for inmates ready for parole is made in prison. Prison textile operations also produce denim work aprons, the familiar California bear flag, as well as American flags, pillows, mattresses, and mattress covers, and so-called soft signs made of canvas-like material at California Medical Facility at Vacaville. Also at the Vacaville facility is a book bindery, which makes loose-leaf notebooks and binders of many other kinds and a factory which makes lenses for eyeglasses worn by state prison inmates, youth authority wards, and state hospital patients. At San Quentin, there is a plant which produces a complete range of detergents, bleaches, and housekeeping chemical compounds for institutional use. The prison industry people at San Quentin are proud to have been among the first detergent blenders 
to convert to wholly biodegradable ingredients. Two state prisons have factories which manufacture metal products. Among the items made at Folsom Prison and Dual Vocational Institution are metal office desks in several styles. Desk accessories, wall lockers, mess hall tables, and metal beds for jail and prison cells and dormitories. Many different kinds of chairs made from tubular steel, fiberglass, and other materials are also produced at these institutions. And of course, there are those license plates. The regular car size blue and gold ones, the personalized plates, and the brand new reflectorized plates, which literally glow in the dark. There are all kinds of special plates, too, from diplomatic core plates to the unique horseless carriage plate for truly antique autos. Moving from metal to wood products, let's take a look at some of the many kinds of wooden furniture made in prison factories. Several styles of chairs, all kinds and sizes of tables for different uses, and casework components produced by prison industries have been designed and developed especially for libraries at various branches of the state college and university system. Others have been custom made for several municipal, county, or regional educational centers. Wood furniture for offices, schools, and libraries is produced in an almost endless variation of sizes and styles. There are, for instance, desks to fit nearly every need, desks for students, secretaries, or executives. Lounge and reception area furniture is available in many styles and colors. Also, bookcases, individual study carrels, card catalog cabinets, and even acoustical screens and wall panels are made by prison factories. The beautiful modern library of California State University at Sacramento is almost entirely furnished with items made at three state prisons. San Quentin, the Correctional Training Facility at Soledad, and California Institution for Men at Chino. The furnishings of this city library in Roseville, California, were also manufactured at those three institutions. And at several state hospitals, the wardrobes and dressers used by the patients are more examples of prison-made products. Farming enterprises and dairies are also part of the prison industry network. Cows at Soledad Chino and Dual Vocational Institution at Tracy provide milk that is consumed by California's 35,000 prison inmates and by many other customers too. Here for instance you see patients at Sonoma State Hospital with cartons of fresh milk delivered right to the door from a prison dairy. The three prisons which have dairies also have acres of land set aside for growing feed for the dairy cows. In addition, the prison farm at Soledad raises corn, sugar beets, and most recently, lettuce and several other kinds of vegetables. The California Medical Facility at Vacaville has a rather unique agricultural operation orchards full of prune trees. Each year these trees produce tons of juicy sun-ripened prunes. The Prison Industry Authority plans to expand both its agricultural and industrial operations. We asked Ray Speck what sort of projects he has in mind. Oh, we're talking about a new uh, metal fabrication factory at uh, CRC. We're exploring egg production, uh, raising hens for egg, uh, egg laying, uh, 
uh, we're maybe someday going to look into tire recapping, uh, automotive repair, uh, things of that nature. As the Prison Industry Authority plans for the future, expanding programs to provide more jobs for more inmates is only part of the agenda. The Prison Industry Administration also hopes to increase the involvement of local businessmen and private industry representatives in trade advisory committees. Men and women serving in this role help prison industry managers to improve their operations and to make job training for inmates more realistic. Uh, and they provide input to the local supervisors and factory superintendent as to uh, improve factory operations, maybe new equipment that's on the market that we might uh, wish to install, plus giving our inmates an opportunity to uh, find jobs when they get on, on parole. In past years, the Correctional Industries Commission has also been of great service to the prison industry program. People like Los Angeles businessman Leonard Greenstone, who served as a Correctional Industries Commissioner for eight years, have set policy and have helped not only to update existing programs, but to develop new ones. Greenstone, whose interest in better job training for inmates goes back some 20 years, is a strong supporter of prison industries programs and products. For what we do and what we have, we produce a better product than free industry does. We have fewer problems with quality than free industry does for the number of pieces of material we put out. Ray Specht agrees. Well, the industry's products are uh, equal to or better in terms of quality than the uh, comparable product you can buy on the street. The quality of goods and services offered has been one reason why prison industry has been able to attract a wide variety of tax-supported agencies as customers. But there's another reason, too. We asked the prison industry's manager, why should a public agency, such as a state hospital, choose to buy products that are made in prison when the same product could be purchased elsewhere at a comparable price? Well, for two reasons. Uh, uh, our products are equal in terms of quality. Uh, by law, our prices are competitive. And uh, from an altruistic reason, the uh, state hospital uh, representative should realize that he or she is uh, creating jobs for inmates and thereby maybe keeping his taxes uh, lowered because they aren't trying to rebuild prisons that the inmates have destroyed because there's nothing for them to do. As the prison population continues to climb, the demand for more jobs for more inmates and the need to expand existing programs and develop new ones will prove real challenges for the prison industry authority. Increased sales of industry's products will help to achieve those goals. So Ray Speck's last word on the subject is... Just buy industries. <laughs>